And what is what does it even mean? So one of the things I think about a lot is worlds with more than one temporal dimension. It's very hard to think about one, more than one temporal dimension. So th that's a really strong mental exercise of breaking the framework in which we think, because uh, most of the frameworks would have a single temporal dimension, right? Well, first of all, most of the frameworks in which we think would have no temporal dimension, right. would have pure, <laughs> like in mathematics, the differential geometry yeah. that Riemann came up with in the 1800s. We don't usually talk about um, what we would call split signature metrics uh, or Lorentzian signature. In fact, if it weren't for relativity, this would be the most obscure topic out there. Almost all the work we do is in Euclidean signature, and then there's this one freakish case of relativity theory in physics that uses this one time and the rest spatial dimensions. Fascinating. So it's usually momentary and just looking at space. Yes. You know, we have these three kinds of uh, equations that are very important to us. We have elliptic, hyperbolic, and parabolic, right? And so the idea is if, if I'm um, chewing gum after eating garlic bread, uh, w when I open my mouth and I've got chewing gum between my lips, maybe it's gonna form an, an elliptic object called a minimal surface. Then when I pop that and blow through it, you're gonna hear a noise that's gonna travel to you by a wave equation, which is gonna be hyperbolic. But then the garlic breath is gonna to diffuse towards you and you're eventually gonna be very upset with me mm -hmm. according to a heat equation, which will be parabolic. So those are the three basic paradigms for most of the work that we do. And a lot of the work that we do in, in mathematics is elliptic, whereas the physicists are in the hyperbolic case. And I don't even know what to do about more than one temporal dimension because I think almost no one studies that. I can't believe you just captured uh, much of modern physics in the example of chewing gum. Well, I have an off-color one, which I chose not to share, but hopefully the kids at home uh... can imagine. <laughs> okay, so, okay, that is the place where we come from. Now, if we want to arrive at a possibility of breaking the frameworks at with two versus zero temporal dimensions, how do we even begin to think about that? Well, let's think about it as you and I getting together in New York City, okay? So if you tell me, uh, Eric, I want to meet you in New York City. Go to the corner of, uh, I don't know, 34th Street and 3rd Avenue, and, and you'll find a building on the northwest corner and go up to the 17th floor, right? So what do we have? 3rd Avenue, that's one coordinate. 34th Street, that's a second coordinate, and go up to the 17th. And what time is that? Oh, 12 noon. All right, well, now imagine that we traded the ability to get up to a particular height in a building, and it's all flat land, but I'm gonna give you two temporal cords. So meet me at 5 p.m. and 12 noon at the corner of 34th and 3rd. That gets to be too mind-blowing. I've got two separate watches. And presumably that's just specifying a single point in those two different dimensions, but then being able to travel along those dimensions. Let's like, Let me see your right hand. You have no watch on that. Okay, I'm very concerned, Lex, that you're going through life without a wristwatch. <laughs> that is my favorite and most valued wristwatch. I want you to wear it. This guy is funnier than basically any human on earth. <laughs> Lex, it, that has been in my family for months. <laughs> it's a Fitbit. Now, what I want you to understand is Lex Fridman is now in a position to live in two spatial and two temporal dimensions, unlike the rest of us. I clearly am only fit for four, four spatial dimensions. Yeah. So I'm frozen, whereas you can double move. I can double move, yeah. which is funny because this is set in uh, Austin time, yeah. so it's 4 p.m. and this is set in Los Angeles time. Well, but two. that's just with an affine shift in mod 12. Or <laughs> but, but my point is, is that wouldn't that be interesting if there were two separate time scales and you had to coordinate both of those, but you didn't have to worry about what floor of the building because everything was on the ground floor. Okay, that is the confusion that we're having. And if you do one more show, mm -hmm. right, then they're gonna put a watch on your ankle and you're only gonna have one spatial dimension that you can move around. But my claim is, is that all of these are actually sectors of, of my theory, in case we're interested in that, which is geometric unity. There is a two, two sector uh, and a three, one and a one, three and a zero, four and a four, zero. And all of these sectors 
have some physical reality. We happen to live in a one, three sector, but that's the kind of thinking that we don't do. When I say we have to get off this planet, people imagine, oh, okay, it's just Einstein plus some ability to break the law. 